okay, let's just uh, tackle this right out of the gate. Let's just get it over with. Let's be very pragmatic about this so this entire video does not get derailed. Boa Hancock, very interesting character. I have a lot of stuff I want to say about her. Not all of it's going to be nice. Probably not even the majority of it is going to be nice, but I do have a lot of stuff I want to discuss. So let's just get through her character development so we can actually talk about the development of her character. She has awesome tits. Like, she does. 111 centimeters, J-cup, uh, according to Sanji, which I don't think Sanji measured them or anything, but he probably has, like, a psychic power relating to bra size, so let's just, we could take his word for it. Um, yeah, yeah, they're awesome. They're, they're big, the anime focuses on them all the fucking time. Watch the 3D 2Y special, where her clothes get completely melted off, and just, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've jerked it to her, okay? I can admit that. I, I will admit that. I, I'm an honest engine. I think a lot of you need to as well. I'm going to throw a poll up here. Even just make sure. That, that entire damn thing should be yes. Okay. So, uh, yeah. We, we got that out of the way. We got it out of the way. She has huge knockers. Okay. Well, we're not going to mention that a single time throughout the video. Let's be mature about this and get to it. Okay. Boa Hancock. Now. She's the Empress of the Sea. She's the only female amongst the warlords uh, ever, even with the new ones that came about. Uh, she's the only female that's ever there. Uh, she was also the one, up until Buggy, to have the lowest bounty before it was uh, frozen. Whenever you become a warlord, your current bounty, whatever it is, becomes frozen, and you uh, become like a government dog, essentially. Um, but that description does not not really fit uh, Boa. She had a, a bounty of 80 million, which was like 1 million below crocodiles, and then Buggy's was 15 million when he arrived. Uh, Blackbeard's was zero as well, but before all of them, she was she was there at the original seven when the series started. But uh, yeah, Boa Hancock cannot be considered a dog of the government. What she can be considered is a cold-hearted bitch. She is. She is a cold-hearted bitch. Now, you might be saying, well, yeah, Teching, I mean, she was introduced as a cold-hearted bitch. I mean, okay. Like, we had Crocodile, right? Crocodile is like, alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take control of an entire country and deprive them of rain and make them hate their king, and then I'm going to try to awaken a super weapon to, I don't know, take over the world or whatever, I'm Crocodile. And then you had, you know, that's pretty evil, but then you had Doflamingo, who was like, huh, I'm gonna rule over an entire country of people and make them hate their king. Oh, well, that was actually sounding very familiar. No, Del Flamingo was worse because he was like the ruler of an underground mafia. And then he was like, I'm going to make family members forget their loved ones by turning them into toys. I'm like, okay, that's pretty sick and fucked up. Boa Hancock kicked kittens and baby seals and puppies. She kicked small animals. She threw an old woman out of a fucking castle. Can you think of any other major fictional character that did that? Aside from Kuzco? I don't think so. She's a bitch, all right? And, and, and you know what? She still is, okay? And okay, so Boa Hancock, uh, when she was a child, I guess let's just start there. Uh, sympathetic character. Her and her uh, sisters, Marigold and uh, Sanderzonia, were thrown in uh, Marijois. They were captive. They were taken as prisoners there. Don't really know how that whole story went, how they were captured or whatever, but they spent their childhood basically living as slaves to the royal, uh, the, the world nobles, right? When Fisher Tiger, the member of the Sun Pirates that you may recall I mentioned back in my Jinbei discussion, when he raided Marijua and when he uh, let all the, the, the slaves free, he didn't just leave the, the fishmen free, he left the, uh, the, the, all the slaves free, humans included. So even though Fisher Tiger didn't really like humans for what they did, he still saw them being slaves and he freed them. Um, unlike the fishmen, however, though, they didn't you know join up with Fisher Tiger or anything like that, although they do have admiration towards them, uh, you know, and they, they, they do you know, appreciate what they did. Um, now, the the mark on their back, though, for that reason, the stamp of the Celestial Dragons, that was not taken away. You know how uh, Fisher Tiger branded all the fishmen with the sun symbol? They didn't have that. They still had the stamp on their back, which they considered, you know, very shameful to have that mark on them. Eventually, they made it back to their homeland, Amazon Lily, uh, which is an island located in the Calm Belt. It's completely isolated from the rest of the world, essentially. The only way to get there is with uh, the special Kuja pirate ship, which is, uh, you know, uh, driven by poisonous, venomous snakes. And poisonous and venomous. That's pretty. That's pre there is a distinction between the two, and it's uh, quite a bit difference. But I guess they're both. Um, or using new navy technology, you can get their like bad paddle ship. But it's in the calm belt, and it's surrounded by uh, sea kings. So not a lot of people like to go near it. It's an all-female island, and if you're a male and land there, it's pretty much a death sentence anyway. So most people stand clear of the place. Uh, the reason I guess she was made a warlord. It was very vague on this, but I guess the former. 
empress of Amazon Lily was a warlord or was a feared pirate. And I guess because of the actions there and because they knew Bo was the next one, maybe they knew about her devil fruit ability as well, or maybe they knew about her cruel bitch-like nature, they decided, all right, we're going to put a bounty on your head, and then eventually she was made a warlord. Now, here's the thing, though. It would be one thing, because of her childhood, because of being brought up as a slave, it would be one thing if you would consider that Boa and the rest of her tribe are just very distrusting of the outside world. They like to be kept to their own island. They like to have their own society, which is flourishing. Amazon Lily is very effectual at being... Uh, Oda makes it very clear to say that they are a thriving um, island. They uh, they do require the protection of uh, Boa Hancock, which I'll get to in a second, but they're a very thriving island, uh, and they just want to be left alone. That's why Boa is a little bit cold and reserved. No, 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 no. Maybe the other islanders are like that. The other islanders are just kind kind of like okay with just being alone and isolated and they have a distrust of the outside world particularly men some of them have not even seen men but boa hancock being i don't, I don't know what happened maybe it's just you know too many people told her oh you're so beautiful or what it was the devil fruit power i don't know but somewhere along the line she just got this arrogant like like nuclear level arrogance about her where she's like i'm beautiful so i can do whatever i want and nobody will care and because of that, she is the very definition. She is the physical embodiment of narcissism compressed down into human form. Okay? And it's not just people from the outside world. It's her own people. If anybody, anybody gives her lip, she will fucking, like, you know, drop kick their ass. No matter what. It doesn't matter if it's a marine or a pirate or a member of her own fucking tribe. She doesn't give a shit. All right? She's queen bitch, anybody says otherwise, off with their heads, essentially, or I turn you to stone, you know, or, or if you're lucky, you know, right? And, and you know what? The perfect example of this is the first time we meet her, the first time we get introduced to this queen of arrogance and narcissism is when she was uh, being asked to join the Marine Ford war, war, right? Okay, all the warlords have to come together for this. It's a mandate by the government. That's like the only rule they give you. It's like, okay, we're going to make you basically a, a, a legal pirate. We're going to give you government permission to be a pirate, all right? And you, you can have your own island and blah, blah, blah. We're not going to bother you whatever, but when we call upon you, you come, or we're going to revoke that title. Now, as I said, Amazon Lily is usually isolated, right? But with the uh, furtherance of Navy technology, with Vegapunk coming up with all these crazy, wacky new inventions, getting to Amazon Lily is not so difficult as it was anymore. You can still get there now. Maybe not run-of-the-mill pirates can, but the Marines certainly can. So, it's becoming steadily more dangerous now that their island might be invaded. Really, the only ironclad protection that island has, her, all her people has, which she is their queen, she is their empress, is that her title of the warlord. So, you'd think, in order to protect her, her tribe and their, their way of life, is that the, the, she would, you know, like, make sure to keep that title. But no, Momonga shows up off her island, and they say, Okay, you gotta come with us to this war. And, like, physical embodiment of narcissism, she's like, fuck you, I'm not going. And then she turns Momonga's crew to fucking stone, and Momonga was only able to resist because he was smart enough to, like, stab himself in the f hand before that, and she just leaves. She's like, bring it. And, and, you know, like, that is the stupidest thing ever. That is basically like saying, yeah, you can revoke my title and burn my island to the ground, but I'm beautiful, so it's okay. Like, oh my god can't believe you would want me to fight in your fucking war. You know, like, so is she stupid on top of being a bitch? Like, because she can't possibly be so arrogant to think that I'm just going to discard this title of warlord. And if the Marines come knocking on my door, that I'm going to be able to win that fight. The Kuja are strong. The Kuja are really strong. They're some of the first characters in this entire series to demonstrate the use of hockey. Very strong. But the Marines are stronger. The Marines got battleships. At the end of the day, you kind of just got sticks. I mean, hockey infused sticks, but you still just got sticks. They got, they got battleships, bitch. And they got, like, a lot of people and vice admirals and admirals that can all use fucking hockey. I'm not saying, like, the Marines would all descend upon the island, but if they revoke their title they would view them as nothing more than an island filled with pirates and and they would be pretty pissed at boa for not helping with the war on with whitebeard 
You know? So, um... So, yeah, she's not a great character. Do not look up to her. Now, when she meets Luffy, this changes. For Luffy. Because... Luffy was the only person to resist her siren call using her, uh, the love love fruit. The ability that literally shoots a love beam, like, straight out of Sailor Moon. And anybody that gets caught in this love beam, it doesn't matter the gender. If you have any impure thoughts in your heart, I, I guess directly about Boa, uh, then you will be turned to stone. And then she has a variety of other techniques that utilize this fruit. It's a very weird fruit. You know, it doesn't just turn you to stone. She can also, like, shoot bullets shaped like hearts. And, and she can, like, uh, and, and, and she can just skip over the impurity, I guess, right away and just kick you. And then turn you to stone wherever she kicked you, you know? So it's a very odd fruit. But the first person to ever resist that ability was Luffy. And then she falls head over heels for her for him because... It's the only man that could stand up to me. I don't know. I don't know where Oda was really going with this. But, yeah, so she she falls in love with Luffy. And uh, after that, you know, she stops being such a bitch. Not really. We still see her kick around like baby otters all the time without, you know, even after she meets Luffy. But, see, most of the time after that, though, we only see her when she's with Luffy. You know where I'm coming from here? It's not like we get to see a lot of scenes with her just by herself. And when we do, she still exhibits her own personality. But whenever she's around Luffy, you know, she's all like, Oh, okay, whatever, yeah, whatever, I'll help you out. I'll, I'll help you get into Impel Down, it's fine. And, uh, yeah, so when she's around Luffy, she acts sort of like a decent human being. But that doesn't change the fact, like, when it's with anybody else, like with Jinbei or Rayleigh, characters that she really should like, um, you know... Uh, or at least not hate, at the very least, she's really kind of like, fuck off, you know, and she still exhibits her same behavior with everybody else, so, you know, don't be fooled for a second, I I'm under the impression that her devil fruit might be able to transcend, uh, dimensions, right, because you don't want to think of her like that, I'm sure there's quite a few people right now that are pissed off with the way I'm, I'm describing her, right, but like, wait, no, she's so cute, she is cute, she's adorable, you know, yeah, when she's around Luffy, otherwise, pretty pretty stone cold. Bitch's heart got iced over a long time ago, right? And hey, like I said, she was a slave. It makes sense. But, uh, there, I mean, there's other, I mean, Boa, her sisters, Boa Sandersonia and Boa Marigold, they were both enslaved too. And they're, they're actually somewhat decent. They at least care about their own freaking tribe to an extent. More so than Boa does. You know, and then you have Grandma Neon, like, telling her, like, you're an idiot for doing that, for turning away the, the Marines. You know, you need to be, you need to have this title to protect us. And Grandma Neon's going on and on, explaining all the different issues with the, the world and why, how she should be paying attention to that. And she's not listening. She doesn't give a fuck. You know, she's just been spoon-fed this her whole life. I don't know. I don't know. Um, but hey, I mean, it's effectual. It's effectual. It's effectual as fuck, this whole, like, I'm beautiful, so no one will ever do anything that I dislike. Um, because she does go to the war. She she goes because Luffy, she had to help Luffy get into Impel Down. So because of that, she had to go fight, right? And uh, throughout the fight, throughout the entire war, she doesn't, pr she pretty much goes against the Marines, like, orders a bunch of times. And beyond that, she actually visibly attacks and injures other marine soldiers. Now, I believe this was expanded on a lot more in the anime. I think there was a lot more scenes where you see Boa Hancock staring down marine soldiers as kind of like comic relief because they padded the fuck out of Marine Ford in a lot of places. Like, they added way too much filler. But, at the end of the day, uh, you know, she she's supposed to be on the side of the marines and she keeps getting in the way. I know she got in the way of Smoker and she got in the way... Of, uh, I, I think, I, I see, it's happened so much, I can't even remember, but I think she got in the way of the PXs, the pacifistas one time. That might have just been the anime, I don't know, but she got in the way a few times. I know for one fact, she uses uh, her, like, perfume femur, the attack where, like, she kicks you, and then, like, whatever part she kicked turns to stone. She did that, and she attacked Smoker, she broke uh, Smoker's uh, uh, staff. Um, and, 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 yeah, and, and it's just, like, Smoker's like, what are you doing? You know, you're, you're freaking on our side. What are you doing? And, you know what the craziest thing is? 
There are no repercussions for this. There are no repercussions whatsoever. I after the war, like right after the war is over and Luffy escapes on Law's submarine, uh, she hijacks a navy ship and follows Luffy and and just I mean I, I, she hijacks the navy ship, you know, goes to get Luffy, pick him up, and then bring him back to Amazon Lily. Nobody ever questions this. No one ever thinks for a second. Wait a second. Huh, let me, let's try to put two and two together here. Okay, so Straw Hat Luffy somehow managed to invade Impel Down the same time Boa Hancock was there. And then Straw Hat Luffy appears in Marineford and is protected by Boa Hancock several times. And, oh look, he, Luffy also somehow managed to get his hands on the key to Ace's handcuffs. Huh. Who could have given him that? Oh, and then after the war... Wait, wait, wait. Boa Hancock hijacked a Navy ship? Huh. Where would she be taking that? That's weird. <laughs> like, um... I'm pretty sure somebody would be able to put two and two together here. And I'm not even talking about, like, low-level Navy soldiers that would just go gaga over her. Like, yeah, whatever. She stole this ship. I think, I think what she did was she turned the crew to stone... But did she ever turn this, the crew back from stone? And did they ever, hey, uh, what happened to you? Oh, yeah, Boa Hancock hijacked our ship. Oh, huh. You know, you think one of the high-ranking members, like one of the admirals or one of the other warlords or Sengoku or Garp would be able to click this. Uh, well, maybe not Garp because he wanted, you know, his grandson to be safe, obviously. He's not going to rat out his own grandson. But you think Sengoku or S Suru or somebody would have been like, hey, maybe there's a connection here. Just a tad. Um... But no, no, no. Okay, so anyway, um, the, the, the time skip, we don't really get to see much of her after that, after Marine Ford. That was pretty much her shining moment there. Uh, afterwards, we see her very briefly. Uh, she was R Luffy's ride to and back uh, Ruskina. Ruskina, the place where uh, Rayleigh trained him. So they pick him up, and they bring him back to, to Shaba Ondi. And uh, funniest scene, though. Funniest scene that really just sticks it to that bitch is that when they're leaving, Luffy, I guess, developed somewhat of, of, uh, uh, uh he managed to at least see beyond, like, just uh, the obliviousness that Luffy has, and, you know, when they meet for the first time after two years, Boa is, of course, still smitten with him, and, and Boa's like, Luffy, marry me, and, and Luffy's just like, oh, thanks for the food, I'm not marrying you, though. And then, even if it, it's not just not just one time, I think, like, later on, when they're about to drop Luffy off at Shaba Ondi, he says it again. He's like, bye! Not marrying you, though! I'm like, oh, yeah, Luffy, yeah! You are burned, Pirate Empress! You are so fucking burned! Ha. <sighs> Yeah, and uh, after that, um, she helps Luffy and them escape the Marines uh, at, from Shab Shabaondi to get to Fishman Island. She uh, uses her powers to turn a certain, um, you know, like a Navy blockade to stone so they can get away. But after that, that's pretty much all we get. She returns to uh, Amazon Lily, and we see her, I think, in a cover page once where she has, like, a huge blown-up image of Luffy on, like, the side of her castle. And, uh, and that's it. Hey, look. Is she an interesting character? Yes. You can be interesting and still be a bitch. It's possible. You know. Um, just like you can be interesting and also be a dick. I'm watching a lot of JoJo's right now, and that's Dio Brando to, to a T, in my opinion. But, yeah. Um, and, and, you know, she had a main part in the story. Like, if it was not for her, you know, Luffy would not have been able to access Impel Down. He probably wouldn't have gotten as far as he did in Marineford. Uh... Great character design. In fact, she was one of the first few uh, warlords designed by Oda, if I remember correctly. It was like around the same time that Luffy and the gang were about to enter the Grand Line. And somebody, I think it was like maybe one of Oda's editors, asked him to like, maybe you should draw like like silhouettes or like the, uh, the like maybe an image of like the enemies that Luffy and, and the Straw Hats are going to face on the Grand Line. And one of he drew like a bunch of characters with their back turned and one of those characters was an earlier rendition of Hancock. Didn't look exactly like Hancock, but slender woman, black hair, and a snake uh, in, a, in, a, in, like a, in a dress. So it was very apparent it was Hancock. So he, he planned her existence to be a, a, you know, a while before that, and she was first mentioned, I believe, in Thriller Bark, when they were like, oh, that's the Pirate Empress, you know, like the, the only person that rivals her in beauty is Shira Hoshi. 
I'll take Shirahoshi any day. Like, she's a crybaby, but, I mean, oh, man, just, like, I'm, all, I, like, if you want to like her character, like, her abilities or whatever, fine, but don't, I, I can't, I can't, I mean, I just look at her and I'm just like, you are so, you are so shallow, and the only time you act like even a halfway decent human being is whenever Luffy is mentioned. I mean, I guess I gotta give Luffy credit, he was a positive influence on her, but there's nothing to say that she's, like, a better person all around because of that. There's nothing to say, like, oh, she's completely changed her personality because of Luffy to everyone else, you know? I don't know. Maybe she did. Maybe she didn't. What do you think below? Like, comment, subscribe, all that good shit. Thank you for watching. Uh, and uh, I don't know if, if, if Hancock's going to appear. Probably will. Probably will appear later on down in the line, maybe when we get closer to, like, World Noble stuff, because she has, like, a play in that game. But for right now, I don't think we're going to see much of her for, for right now. Uh, as for the next one, uh, let's check the docket here. Where are we at? Uh, the next one will be... Bartholomew Kuma. Gotten a lot of recommendation, a lo lot of anticipation for this one. Kuma, which is a character we do not really know a lot about, um, necessarily. Uh, we know, like, a lot of things that hint to his past, but not so much, like, what he actually does or his personality really beyond. Uh, but, uh, should be an interesting, um, I, I certainly have a lot to talk about. I certainly have a lot of stuff to go on. But, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. This will be Teching 101, signing out. Till next time.